Thrill Seeker. Welcome to answering the question. Spoiler alert for the movie, No One Will Save You. I watched it on Hulu. If you want to watch it, turn this video off and come back after you have done so. Last chance to avoid any spoilers. The question is, how was Bryn able to reject the parasite, put it in her mouth, and what was the meaning of the ending? The parasite was able to control the host by presenting their most sought after desires and a better life, which would make the host want to stay in a controlled trance versus choosing the real world. Bryn feels guilty and traumatized after unaliving Maud and her mental health issues unfortunately prevent Bryn from accepting the fantasy. She believes she is not worthy of being happy, which allows her to forcefully reject the happiness the parasite presented. For the humans who rejected the parasites, the flying saucers transformed them into doppelgangers, which is what the double of Bryn was. Bryn's doppelganger appeared to be a better version of Bryn, and because Bryn does not accept the idea of being happy, better, and a whole person, Bryn eliminates the double with a box cutter. Now, a recap of the movie. Bryn is the seamstress still living in her childhood home who mourns the loss of her mother, Sarah, and her best friend, Maude. She copes with these losses by constructing a model town in her living room. The model town represents the perfect life that Bryn wishes she could have, but can't. So she lives vicariously through the models as opposed to how it is in real life. That is how at the end of the movie, the humans that are influenced by the aliens are able to be accepted by her because it's almost like the model town coming to life. She leads a solitary existence and is shunned by the townspeople. One night she awakens to discover an intruder in her home and discovers it is a humanoid alien. The alien uses telekinesis to subdue her, but Bryn accidentally unalives it with a broken fragment of a model bell tower. Bryn discovers that all electrical devices in her car have been rendered useless since the alien's intrusion and cycles in the town finding evidence of an alien attack on their neighbors. The town appears unaffected as she makes her way to the local police station. There, Bryn unexpectedly encounters Maud's parents, who happen to be the chief of police and his wife. Maud's embittered mother spits in Bryn's face. Bryn decides to flee the town by bus, but several passengers, influenced by alien parasites, attempt to restrain her. She escapes and discovers that many of the townspeople now appear to be under the alien's control. Bryn returns home and fortifies her house. That evening, a tractor beam from a flying saucer carries the alien's corpse out of her house, and Bryn is forced to fend off two more alien intruders, impaling one with a broken mop handle and immolating the larger one when it's left legs become entangled in her car and she ignites the gas tank. After she runs back into her house, another alien restrains her and places a parasite in her mouth. She falls into an intense hallucination in which her life is back to normal and Maude is alive. With great effort, she breaks free of the hallucination and pulls the parasite from her mouth finding herself in a field. A flying saucer arrives and transforms the parasite into a doppelganger of Bryn, which pursues the real Bryn into the woods. The doppelganger catches Bryn and stabs her, but Bryn unalives it with a box cutter and escapes to a deserted road. There she encounters an immense alien before being sucked into a flying saucer. She is psychically probed by a group of aliens within the craft, revealing the event that turned the town against her. During an argument, she had with Maud when both were younger. Maud knocked Bryn to the ground and Bryn struck Maud with a stone, unaliving her. The aliens converse with one another and appear to agree on a course of action. So the entire movie, when Bryn is unaliving the aliens and unaliving Maud, she was doing all that out of self-defense or being reactive. So in my opinion, the aliens determined that if nobody bothers Bryn, Bryn's not gonna bother anybody else, and that's why they returned her to Earth unharmed and uninfluenced. They returned Bryn to Earth unharmed and free of their influence. Bryn is later shown living a happy life in her repaired home. The other residents of the town are under the control of the aliens. In stark contrast with Bryn's life before the invasion, greet her warmly. The aliens accepted that Bryn would not oppose them or the influenced humans if they both treat her warmly and as a friend, which is the opposite of the townspeople being against her after Bryn struck Maud with a stone and unaliving her. Bryn wanted forgiveness. 
She felt guilt. She had mental health issues and felt lonely, which helped Bryn accept living in the town under the influence of the aliens because what she wanted was not for Ma to be alive, but for those in the town to forgive her and accept her. The parasite gave Bryn a pleasant experience, but Maude, in the past rejecting her, striking Bryn, and feeling guilty for unaliving her, even though it was self-defense, was so impactful that Bryn refused to be happy. All Bryn wanted was to be accepted and loved, so the humans being influenced by the aliens turned out to give Bryn the existence she could participate in and agree to that being the new normal. Also, I believe the parasites were the actual invaders and not the gray aliens due to the parasite leaving the alien host after Bryn accidentally unalived it with the broken fragment of a model bell tower. The aliens had abilities such as telekinesis and telepathy and technology, including the flying saucers with tractor beams, but the ability to create illusions came from the parasites. The aliens would not have a need to control a town or people since they are advanced and would not have a benefit to influencing us unless they wanted humans as pets, similar to how we have dogs, cats, turtles, and other animals as pets. However, if the idea of having pets or influence humans was an option, then they would not have allowed Bryn to live since Bryn could not be affected and had demonstrated unaliving multiple aliens, including a doppelganger of herself. Bryn being returned turned home unharmed to Earth, in my opinion, was done because the goal was not to dominate the humans, but to add a species to the parasite ranks. If humans were wanted to be slaves or incubators for aliens, then there would not have been a party at the end and we would have seen pregnant people. The party at the end was a celebration of conquest. Writer-director Brian Duffield has stated he is open to creating sequels if the movie has success and it has been the most streamed film across all platforms in September and October, so there more than likely will be more movies. In my opinion, it would be great to explore Bryn becoming pregnant by one of the influenced humans, aiding to the parasites to influence more humans, and even seeing Bryn working on a flying saucer and going through a new higher orientation so we can see the other species and learn more about the aliens. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. Thumbs up the video, share your social media, subscribe, click the notification bell. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Go forth, do great things, and I'm out. Peace.